how are you girls today i want us to see or discuss how breathing occurs breathe in out in out so what activities release to uh, people to breathe in and out what have you noticed when you breathe in? Out. What have you noticed when you are breathing in and out? What have you noticed on the movement of your chest cavity when you breathe in? Out. Probably you have noticed that there is movement of uh, the chest cavity. That is... The thoracic cavity is bulging out and moving upward as you breathe in. And if you are breathing out, the chest cavity uh, is actually moving downwards. So we want to discuss about the mechanism that facilitates movement of air into and out of the lungs. The movement of air into and out of lungs is what is known as ventilation. So we want to learn how ventilation occurs in a mammal, okay? So, the exchange of air between the lungs and the outside is made possible by change in volume in the thoracic cavity. This volume is altered by the movement of the intercostal muscles and the diaphragm, okay? So the movement of air into the lungs the movement of air reaching oxygen into the lungs and outside is what is known as ventilation. This is what is known as ventilation. So today we shall learn about ventilation. But before we discuss about ventilation, I think we can um, observe this short video. We can observe this short video here. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Mechanics of breathing. Consciously take a breath and think about the fact that there are 10 different muscle groups working together to make this happen. These muscle groups include the diaphragm and intercostal muscles. The main muscle used for breathing is the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a dome-shaped structure consisting of several large muscles, which is sandwiched between the chest cavity, containing the lungs and the rib cage, and the abdomen, containing the digestive system, including your stomach. The muscles that move the rib cage itself are the internal and external intercostal muscles. They are each attached to the ribs and run between them. To inhale air, the diaphragm contracts and moves down, while the external intercostal muscles contract, forcing the rib cage up and out. The combined effect of the diaphragm and intercostal muscles increases the volume of the chest cavity and expands the lungs. This expansion of the lungs increases their volume, reducing the pressure within them, causing air to be drawn in. This action is similar to a piston sucking petrol into a car engine. In normal breathing, we use around 25% of our lung capacity, which is called our tidal volume. As you inhale deeply, the diaphragm moves further down into the abdomen, pushing your belly out, giving more room for the lungs to expand and draw in more air. This type of breathing is called belly breathing or abdominal breathing and is critical to prepare you for your free dive. Belly breathing allows you to completely fill your lungs with air. The maximum amount of air your lungs can hold is called your total lung capacity. With training, you can use more of your lung capacity Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So what have you observed? Probably in the video you have seen that um, breath during breathing in, okay, the process of breathing in and out is brought about by change in volume of the thoracic uh, cavity. 
This is brought about by contraction and relaxation of muscles. And these muscles are the intercostal muscles, that is the internal intercostal muscles, and the external intercostal muscles. And also contraction and relaxation of the diaphragm. All this brings about change in volume of the thoracic cavity and also a change in pressure. This now leads to air to move into the lungs and out of the lungs, hence bring about breathing or ventilation. Now, how does this occur? So we shall start of all, first of all discuss about inhalation. How does inhalation occur? So, as we are discussing about uh, inhalation, kindly breathe in and out. As you are doing that, try to uh, place your hand uh, on top of your chest and then you breathe out. In, out. In, out. So what are you able to notice on the movement of the chest cavity as you are breathing in? First of all, we want to concentrate on breathing in. So if you breathe in, you find out that your rib cage is moving upward and outwards. Okay? And as you are breathing out, you have noticed that the rib cage moves downwards and inward. Is it clear? If that is the case, what brings about all this movement and how does air move into the lungs? So, concentrate on these two diagrams and we shall begin with the first one. So, in the first diagram, during inhalation, what actually happens? So, during inhalation, okay, um, this one is brought about by contraction of the intercostal muscles which are found into the outer side. Let me choose another pen, okay, so that you can see clearly. So I've said uh, uh, that the external intercostal muscles contract, okay? They contract, contract, while the internal intercostal muscles which are found inside the rib cage relax. Is it clear? They relax. This makes the, the rib cage to move upward and outwards. Is it clear? So as the rib cage moves upward and outward, okay, okay, the diaphragm muscles contract and they move downwards. They flatten, hence moving downwards. So what happens in the thoracic cavity? This increases the volume inside the thoracic cavity, but the pressure decreases. Okay, when pressure decreases, um. Because the pressure will be low inside the lungs, then the atmospheric pressure here, air is forced into the lungs through the nostrils, into the trachea, and further into the lungs. Is it clear? So, what are the events occurring during inhalation? We have said, and I will repeat, during inhalation, this is brought about by the following events. The external intercostal muscles contract... They contract while the in internal intercostal muscles relax. This causes, okay, the rib cage to move upward and outwards. The diaphragm muscles contract and become or flatten. This increase the volume of the of the rib cage, yeah? the volume of the rib cage, but its pressure reduces. Hence, air is forced into the nostril through the trachea to the lungs. And that is the process of inhalation. What about exhalation? Let us now concentrate on the second diagram. So, during exhalation, that is breathing out, eh? the external intercostal muscles relax. Okay? They relax, they relax, relax, while the internal intercostal muscles contract, okay? The ribcage moves downwards and inwards, downwards and inwards. The muscles of the diaphragm relaxes 
and they assume their dome shape. That is, they become dome shaped. Is it clear? This reduces the volume inside the thoracic cavity, but pressure inside here increases. Pressure inside the thoracic cavity increases. Therefore, air is forced out of the lungs through the trachea to the nostril and outside the atmosphere. So these actually are the events occurring during inhalation and exhalation. Now, let us discuss uh, these events now through our theory. So I've said inspiration. This is what we call breathing in. So during breathing in, the ribs are raised upward and outwards by contraction of the external intercostal muscles. So the external intercostal muscles contract. Okay? While the inner or the inner intercostal muscles, internal intercostal muscles relax. This makes the rib cage to move upward and outward. Is it clear? The diaphragm muscles contract and the diaphragm moves downwards. So what happens to the volume? The volume of the thoracic cavity increases, but pressure reduces. Therefore, air rushes into the lungs from the outside through the nostrils, the trachea, and finally into the alveoli. When in the alveoli, gaseous exchange occurs. Okay? Good. Now, what about expiration? What about exhalation? Expiration is also known as exhalation. So, so I have drawn uh, the rib cage here. I think I'm able to see it. So, this is an example of uh, the rib cage. Yeah? And, uh, uh, yes. This is the rib cage, okay? Let me assume these are the lungs inside here. We have one here, another one here, okay? Good. So we are saying now, during expiration, um, the, 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 the internal intercostal muscles contract. That is, these muscles inside here contract. The internal intercostal muscles, they contract, okay? They contract, meaning moving this side, eh? okay? While well, the external intercostal muscles, these muscles here, will relax, okay? They relax, they relax. Hence, moving uh, or making the rib cage to move downwards and inwards. This makes the rib cage to move downwards and inwards. Is it clear? And the diaphragm muscles relax. Hence, the, it moves upward and assume the dome shape. So if this thoracic cavity moves downwards and inwards, and the diaphragm muscles move upward, this reduces the pressure, mm, the, the volume in here. It reduces the volume in here. But what about the pressure? The pressure in here increases. Hence, air is forced from the lungs through the trachea to the nose and outside to the atmosphere. Okay? Good. So let us now go to the uh, literature. What are we saying? We have said that the internal intercostal muscles contract while the internal, uh, the external intercostal muscles relax. The ribcage moves downwards and inwards. The diaphragm muscles relax and they assume the dome shape. They are actually pushed upward, eh? hence assuming the dome shape. Dome shape is this one. Eh? Okay? Yeah. So, uh, the volume of the thoracic cavity decreases. So, when the volume here decreases, what about the pressure? The pressure inside uh, here will increase. So, uh, increasing the pressure. So, air is forced out of the lungs to the thoracic uh, to the uh, trachea and finally to the atmosphere. So, when air is inside these lungs, 
gaseous exchange occurs. So the air which is exhaled usually has got more carbon-4 oxide than the one which was inhaled. And it has got less oxygen than the one which was initially inhaled. So this is the process of expiration. Okay? Good. So, name the muscles that bring about uh, the process of expiration in mammals. There are three types of muscles. We have the external intercostal muscles, the internal intercostal muscles, and the diaphragm. Okay? What events brings about inhalation? We have said that during inhalation, external intercostal muscles contract while internal intercostal muscles relax. This makes the ribcage to move out, out, outwards and upwards. Okay? And the muscle of the diaphragm relax. The muscle of the diaphragm relax, hence move downwards. Eh? This increases the volume in this thoracic cavity. Okay? But the pressure decreases, hence air rushes into the lungs. Is it clear? What about expiration? I said that during expiration, um, the internal intercostal muscles contract, while the while the outer intercostal muscles relax. This makes the ribcage to move downwards and inward. And then we have said the muscles of the diaphragm relax, hence they assume a dome shape. That is, they move upward. The result is the volume of the thoracic cavity here reduces, but pressure here increases, hence forcing air to move out. That is inspiration and expiration. So what is inspiration and what is expiration? Good. Inspiration is breathing in. What is the shape of the diaphragm during inspiration? The diaphragm flattens. The muscles contract, but the diaphragm flattens. What about during expiration? That is breathing out. Diaphragm muscles relax and they assume dome shape. During expiration, what happens to the pressure inside thoracic cavity? The pressure inside here decreases. Okay. What about the volume? The volume or the pressure inside here increases. What about the volume? The volume decreases, eh? but pressure increases, hence forcing air to move outside the, the lungs. Okay? Okay, so these are the events occurring during expiration and inspiration. We shall stop there for today. Have a nice time. Let us meet again in our next lesson. Goodbye.